But Johnny, let's move on into our second topic, and we are talking Game of Thrones here on the podcast. And it's why I wore this shirt, my Tyrion shirt, because we're looking at Tyrion. We're looking at a Jon Snow Tyrion theory. Basically, there are two sides to the Daenerys coin. Which way is she going to go in season eight? Is she going to go the way of Tyrion? Is she going to go the way of Jon Snow? And some people might say, well, Ricky, she's already gone the way of Jon Snow with a little bit of boat sex at the end of There's still hope. season seven. However, that's not the way I'm talking about. I'm yeah. talking about the allegiance way and more so the battle commander way. And I want to ask you this to start everything out. Yeah. How do you think, because the last thing we saw of Tyrion was his disapproving look when it got hiding to... Hiding underneath the stairs? Hiding underneath the stairs when we got to the um, scene where Daenerys and Jon Snow got it on. And I actually have a quote from Peter Dinklage that I forgot to read. And it says, as I follow, it's dangerous for everyone involved. I'm sure it's good for both of them in the moment, but you don't even get the relief of how beautiful it could be or should be. It's no, it's not good. It should be, but it's not. And even Bran went on to say a little bit of like, you know, this is just Game of Thrones. Mm -hmm. People come together, but eventually the Game of Thrones splits people apart. Exactly. And that's more so with the Daenerys and Jon thing that happened. But how do you think Tyrion is going to play into the Jon Snow Daenerys relationship in season eight? Well, I think the biggest thing is that he's kind of upset more so that she started listening to Jon. He's supposed to be her hand. Mm -hmm. And yeah, there's been a few mistakes because he's not shown as the best strate- battle, commander. battle strategist Yeah, I would go with. He's not a great commander, which is why he's not out in the field. Mm-hmm. Um, the only thing is, too, um, his ideals were, I need to, like, for a lot of what we see his mistakes were with Daenerys, is he doesn't want his family and countrymen dead. Mm-hmm. He also he just doesn't want Daenerys to, in danger either. Yeah, he doesn't want anyone dead. He's mm-hmm. trying to do it without casualties. Where s- The problem is, like, which is why it seems like a lot of mistakes happen, he didn't want casualties. Cersei doesn't give a fuck. No, she doesn't. Which is why there was so many mistakes on his part. Mm-hmm. I bet if it had been fair playing ground, it would have gone pretty successfully. I Some of it, not part, all of it. Part of it is that I just think that Tyrion is not the battle commander. No, that too. He's, he, not, he's not a battle commander. He's not a guy that's used to putting up battle plans no. and leading an army to where... But I think... Oh, go ahead. I was going to say where Jon Snow is kind of had that a little bit yeah. with leading the uh, men of the Night's Watch and kind of everything that he had to deal with beyond the wall. Beyond the wall, um, um, Battle of the Bastards. Mm-hmm. I mean, he has war. Which was one of the greatest scenes in oh, the Game yeah. of Thrones series was the Battle of the Bastards. But, I mean, the the interesting thing about that part yeah. is I will find it interesting when Jamie gets up north. Yeah. Because what I think what will happen, and this is kind of, ah, this is going to get into a theory we're going to talk about later, but I do think Jamie will become their battle commander, and he will be the guy that they lean on for the, hey, what do we do? Like, him and John work together because yeah. Jamie's used to leading an army, and when they go up against Cersei, he knows what's going on in, her head. in the mind of Cersei. Him and Tyrion can team up that way, but it was interesting how once Jon Snow came around, how things slowly shifted into, well, what do you think? What do you think we should do? Yeah, John, what do you think? And then John would say something, and Daenerys would go ahead and do that. Yeah. Like, everything to go north of the wall and fight a White Walker, because you could technically say it's John's fault that Daenerys lost a dragon. Yeah. No, I mean, the thing with that, all that is... Yeah, she's starting to lean towards John, like mm-hmm. we've been saying. Um, and I think that's what's bothering Tyrion more than anything. Mm-hmm. It's just because he was her hand, and then John comes in, swoops in, and then this relationship thing just kind of like t- basically tears that out. Mm-hmm. And it's just like Tyrion has like no say so at this point. Like he said, if you leave, you might die. If you die, you don't get to fix what's going on. You don't, And he actually believes in her. That's the thing. Mm-hmm. He doesn't believe in many things, but he believes in her, mm-hmm. which is why he's like, I don't, like, don't do this. You, If you die, 
you're gone. Yeah. No one's here to fix it. Basically, the thing that I believe in is gone. Like, and then it's like you're spo- as your hand, you're kind of supposed to take my advice, not John's, not this one. But now, if he leans towards, she starts leaning towards John. Mm-hmm. He he does nothing. Well, and we've seen hands before in Game of Thrones. Exactly. Where they say one thing, and then the king goes, "Nah, not really. I'm gonna go in the other direction." They don't have to say yes, but they it's don't like, have hey, to. I'm the one you're supposed to ask for advice. Yeah. I'm the one that you're supposed to take that advice and be like, huh, I am going Let to me really mull it lean over. on that because you are my hand. You are who I trust. You brought me in to advise you. And I wonder if the whole, because to me with the whole Tyrion thing under the stairs yeah, is it wasn't a really like, oh, I don't trust Jon Snow because I think Tyrion trust does John. trust Jon Snow. But it's just one of those things where he's looking at it to where it's like, this ain't a good idea. It's kind of like when I was in college and I was working my um, college job. My boss at the time, after I had started dating a girl that worked at the same place that I was working, Mm -hmm. he said, he goes, okay, I'm not going to tell you what to do, but I will tell you this. Don't shit where you eat. Don't eat where you shit. Don't do that. And that's basically what he was saying is, you know, you come here to work, you're eating, don't shit where you eat. Don't bring that into your work environment. And that's kind of like this where it's like, yes, everyone had kind of, everyone had kind of thought about this throughout the whole season. Like after they were in the Dragonstone cave, everyone's like, man, do you see that sexual tension between Daenerys and John, where I was like, no, didn't really, didn't really see it, didn't really. Ricky didn't want to see it. Well, at that point, I was like, didn't really see it, and like Tyrion said, well, Peter Dinklage said, it's supposed to be beautiful, but it's not, and you're just like, no, it's not, but it should be. Yeah, it should be beautiful, and I really think that this is something because um, the YouTube channel that we watch. In emergency awesome he made a great point of this whole bone fest mm-hmm. has probably been happening behind the scenes because there's the um scene where her and her translator are talking about gray worm and they're talking about her getting it on with gray worm and then she kind of john comes up and she kind of gives daenerys a little look a little look and a smile. Hmm, I didn't notice to that. where it's like, yeah, this has been going on behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. They just haven't been focusing on it until that boom, last part, that epic part at the season seven finale. Yeah. Um, the other thing I was thinking of though mm-hmm. um, is one theory I was watching online. Okay. The pot. What is Tyr- one of Tyr's, Tyr- the, 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 Tyrion's famous lines? A Lannister always pays his debts. And that's just the Lannister line. I know everything. I drink and I know things. I drink and I know things. Yeah. Tyrion is a very smart guy, and mm-hmm. he probably gets that from reading so many different he things. He also knows how to play people. Well, not play people, but read and kind of manipulate people. Do you think Tyrion has an idea that he could be not a Snow? He could possibly be a Targaryen. think he maybe knows that? Maybe. There's the theory out there that he knows or has at least an idea that he's a Targaryen, not a Stark. Maybe. He could. And like, um, because he doesn't approve of his sister and brother either. No. He doesn't approve of that whole thing. So maybe he's like, this is not, this is why this is not a good idea. Hmm. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think how Tyrion would know. Well, I'm just saying because he drinks and he knows things. He does, he obviously probably reads a lot Mm -hmm. because he's not really in the field. He's not that type of person. He's a knowledge person. Because there's another thing with Jon Snow is the fact that. He got to touch a dragon. Yeah. And you only really get to touch a dragon if you're, you've are you got that Targaryen blood in you. Because there's also the there's, theory yeah. that Tyrion is a Targaryen. I'm iffy about that one. But that we'll... Tyrion was like, because there's the theory that, and of course it's kind of pushed to the wayside because one of the dragons was gone. Yeah. Um, the theory where the three dragons were supposed to be Drogon was Daenerys. Rhaegal was um, Jon John Snow, and then Viserion was um, Tyrion. Those were going to be the three dragon riders. However, 
now I think that is kind of pushed into are the three dragon riders just Daenerys, Jon Snow, and the Night King now. Yeah, now that he is a dragon. And I just, I feel like maybe he knows. I would just be interested to see how he knows. Well, Because this show was very meticulous with how the information got discovered and then joint together with Sam and They Brand. were. I'm just saying that's one theory floating out there. That's mm-hmm. why I want to throw it out to you. And, I mean, the potential. I'm not saying he knows 100%, but just the fact that, like, there's an inkling that, like, excuse me, uh, the fact that, like, it's a possibility. That he could be a Targaryen. That he could be a Targaryen. Maybe he knows, like, some things, mm-hmm. and he's a smart guy. He kind of puts a few things together and says, Jon Snow might not be a Snow. Mm-hmm. And then it's Let's like... Let's be honest. Word probably got around that Jon was able to... Touch the dragon. Touch the and dragon. And there's only three people that have been able to touch a dragon. Mm-hmm. Tyrion, Daenerys, and Jon. The three that we're talking about right now. Exactly. Tyrion, just because he, he's like, I'm a friend of you guys. He tells that whole story. He's probably not even thought of as a threat to the dragons in the first place. Mm-hmm. He comes down and frees them. Back when they were in Marine. Exactly. And the thing with that is, that's another reason why people think Tyrion is part of the whole um, Targaryen thing. As well. Okay. However, the thing with it is if he was, we know for a fact that Lannister mother, Mommy Lannister, gave birth to Tyrion, which Targaryen, like, obviously she would have to have had an affair with some Targaryen. Exactly. How, what was the story behind that? Because we had never had anything mentioned about that whatsoever no nothing's been even le- leaning towards mm. him being a targaryen so far besides mm. the fact he was able to touch a dragon which i think he's starts mentioning hey hey i'm a friend unless the mom's a targaryen or part targaryen maybe if there's any like because the lannister name is from the dad side that's true unless Tywin she is lannister unless she is part targaryen or some form she could have been maybe um but then that would make Cersei and Jaime part Targaryen. Yeah, true. That would make them all part Targaryen, which wouldn't really make Ty- sense. It wouldn't, in it. Yeah, it wouldn't, ta- it wouldn't play like, around with the storyline very well. And then all the siblings of Jaime and Cersei would then be Targaryens as well. But yeah, this is an interesting one because yeah. it's going to be interesting into season eight how this all plays out because like... Even the Stark children, I don't think they're going to learn, like, oh, he's Aegon, and we got to call him Aegon now. They're still going to call him. I think they're going to call him John. John, but it's just, how is all this, this, I, I, it's not a love triangle, but this basic triangle. Yeah. With John, Daenerys, and Tyrion, how is that all going to play out? Um, I think there's going to be, as much as... Tyrion respects John and John respects Tyrion. I think they're mm-hmm. gonna kind of butt heads because it's not about like a love triangle as yeah. much as a um, hey, I'm what's the word I'm, I'm the looking hand, for? I'm the hand of the queen. You're not. And then John's probably like, but I know what I'm doing with. I know what I'm dealing with. I like how you do Tyrion's like a normal voice, and then <laughs> and I John goes into John the Snow. John Snow voice. I like John Snow. I do. I, I who like, doesn't I like, like John? Let's be honest. Who doesn't like John Snow? Kit. Kit's amazing. Kit is amazing. Kit is amazing. But I'm John Snow. I'm Snow. John Snow, Johnny. Snow. <laughs> like it's Snow, <laughs> not Snow. I'm John Snow. So it's John Snow. But go on with what you were saying with the whole Tyrion, um, John. What yeah, you it's, think it's going to be more out. of a, it's more of like a head butting thing between them. Not not in a sense that like a lot of other characters have like just blatantly butting heads, but like they're some things they'll agree on if they think it. But mm-hmm. then they're probably going to like go back and forth, okay. especially if they're in the same place giving Daenerys advice because it's mm-hmm. more of an advice triangle. Yeah, it's like Daenerys should be should be taking advice from Tyrion. I know what she, we're doing with but, the White Walkers. But yeah, exactly. Now she's going to be constantly she's going to mm-hmm. more so be taking advice from Jon. Which it was like kind of 50 50. She'd get both advice, like both, yeah. um, both of them. And then, like, now with this relationship thing, this relationship thing starting, it's maybe going to lean more towards, well, I'm going to start listening to John more. Mm-hmm. But let's not forget there's a little wrench thrown in there, too, of who came back to her. What do you mean? Jorah. 
Ooh, well, no, the thing with Jorah yes. is I think he's accepted everything. Like, no, he's accepted everything, but she's always come to him for advice. Yeah, but that's different. That's more of like, like she'll go to Jorah yeah. when she needs advice about John and Tyrion. Yeah. Not about anything else. She'll go to Jorah when she needs advice on that because there was a look at the table when they were at the table in uh, Dragonstone, yeah, where John starts giving the battle commands and like, Jorah looks at Daenerys, looks at John, and then you can kind of tell where he's like, okay, that's how it is, that's how things are, and he's kind of taking that back seat to the John and Daenerys love boat yeah, bang. I'm not even talking about the love thing though. I'm talking about him just being kind of an advisor point because before Tyrion yeah. he was one of her main advisors yeah she'll ask him about John and Tyrion yeah you don't think he's she's gonna start asking him more about like just general things now nope no that's John okay anything else like John is the main go-to guy and then when she needs help between the John and Tyrion struggle we may have then she may go to a Jorah yeah maybe she'll go to Jorah because, because you like, are right Jorah when she was over um Marine. In Marine, he was a, a or was an advisor to her. Yeah, a one big of her advisor. Ma- he was more, like her main advisor. Yeah. Well he was also in love with her, but I mean that's, yeah, well, that's that's besides the point. Exactly. He's kinda of, I think he's accepted that he's not gonna mm-hmm. get anywhere with that. But any other things you think we should mention in this before we move on? No, I think that's um, main, the, the important parts of this. I mean, you got, again, it's not a love triangle. It's a mm. love, it's a advisor triangle where you have Daenerys, John, and Tyrion who don't necessarily want to butt heads, mm-hmm. but they may start because they do have different ideals on how things are supposed to happen. Well, this is where you guys come in. Let us know down below. What do you guys think will play out? In Season 8, when it comes to Jon Snow, when it comes to Tyrion, when it comes to Daenerys, let us know. And Jorah. And Jorah. Let us know down below in the comment section. 